Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. In this video, we're gonna talk about signal routing. So the proper way to connect a microphone or a keyboard or an external effects unit such as a compressor. I'm gonna go over the proper ways of doing this to get the lowest noise and the best sound. So here's your typical recording chain. It starts with your microphone and then it goes to the preamp and then the converter and then it goes into the computer for processing. Now many recording interfaces streamline this process by just having the preamp and converter all built into one box and you don't even realize that they're separate components. You just plug the microphone into it and then it sends it out to the computer through a USB cable or whatever type of cable it's connected with. And if you use the line inputs of your audio interface, then it'll bypass the preamps and your signal chain will look like this. It'll go straight from the line outputs of the source, which is in this case a keyboard, into the converter and then it gets converted to digital and sent out to the computer. So the converter is the final step in the analog audio chain. And what the converter does is it converts the analog audio to digital audio. Now the converter needs what's called a line level signal going into it. What line level refers to is that's the amount of amplification that the signal has. It's the standard level for say a headphone output or the line output of an electronic keyboard or an electronic drum kit or the output of a preamp. Whereas a microphone output is really weak. So the microphone output needs to be amplified in order to bring it up to line level. And that amplification process is done with what's called a preamp. So a microphone needs to get plugged into a preamp and then it goes to the converter. But if you're recording something that has a line output, well that line output is already at line level, so it doesn't need to go through the preamp. So on a recording interface, you'll have what's called line inputs and these go directly to the converter. So they need to accept a line level signal. If you plug a microphone directly into the line input, the signal will be too weak and you'll have a lot of noise. So to record a keyboard, you would go from the line outputs of the keyboard into the line input of the audio interface. Now if you're recording a guitar, guitars have a unique output. It's called a high impedance, also called high Z. This is a very weak signal, similar to a microphone output, except it's unbalanced and the impedance is not optimized to go into a preamp. So you would plug the guitar into a device called a direct box, also called a DI box, and that converts it to a balanced lower impedance signal that you just plug directly into the mic input of the preamp. Now some interfaces have a high Z input and that's basically a direct box built right into the interface so it changes the impedance and balances it and then it sends it to the preamp and then that preamp sends it to the converter which is also built into the interface so you don't really see all the signal routing happening but that's what's going on behind the scenes inside that audio interface. If you have an external effects unit that you want to use, it's going to need to receive a line level input and it's also going to send a line level output. So if you're recording with a microphone, you'll need to send that microphone signal from the microphone to the preamp, from the preamp to the effects unit, and then from the effects unit to the line input of your interface. Now since the effects unit needs to come after the preamp, if you're using the preamps that are built into the interface, many interfaces have what's called a send return option so that you can access the signal after it goes through the preamp and then put your effects unit on it there and then send it into the converter. The entire next lesson is about send and returns. So here's a picture that shows the common inputs and outputs of a recording interface. So I'm going to go from left to right. Uh, first we have the microphone input. So obviously you just plug a microphone into that and then that'll route the signal into the preamp and then to the converter then to the computer. Next we have the high Z input. You plug your guitar into there and then that goes into the preamp and then to the converter, to the computer. And then we have our line input. Now in this example, I'm showing a keyboard plugged into there. You would go from the analog output, which sends a line level output from the keyboard and plug that into the line input of the recording interface. And then another one that I haven't talked about is the MIDI. Most keyboards will have a MIDI in and out. So you would send the MIDI data from the keyboard into the MIDI input of the recording interface and that will route that MIDI information information into your DAW. If you want to know more about recording with MIDI, I've got an entire lesson on it. It's lesson 36. And then we go to our outputs. Now the headphone output, that's pretty obvious. You plug your headphones into there. Outputs one and two are usually what you would connect your main studio monitors to. And then your USB output, that'll go to your computer, of course. Now some recording interfaces have a lot more outputs on them. There's a lot of different ways you can use these additional outputs, such as analog mixing, or routing the signal into analog gear and recording it back in because you like what that analog gear does to it. Or what I like to use some of these outputs for is to connect them to a mixer and the artist that's recording has that mixer there with them. They plug their headphones into it and they can control the volume of the track coming from the computer and they can also control the volume of themselves. 
And whenever you see a studio with a great big analog mixing board, they take the additional outputs of their recording interface and send individual channels out to that mixing board and do the mixing analog on that board and record the output of the mixing board back into the line inputs of the recording interface. That way they still have the convenience of digital recording, but they get the sound of the traditional analog mixing board. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down there and subscribe to this channel because we're going to be coming out with lots more videos on audio engineering. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.